When it comes to the main character of any series, the design philosophy is incredibly important. It's the first thing anyone is going to see or notice when it comes to this character, series, and franchise. It's got to be eye-catching and it's got to have an impact, but it also has to be done right. The look of this character has to be well balanced, it can't be too busy or else it becomes an eyesore, and it can't be too simple or else it becomes forgettable. It also has to mesh well in the context of its media, so how well it connects to and portrays its theme is a huge factor. So, for some Something like Common Rider, the stylization of their titular character is key because they themselves embody the overall aesthetic that makes them and their series distinct from the rest, not to mention we'll be seeing them week after week, so they really need to be pleasing to the eye. Common Rider has gone through such an evolution over the years and has given us so many awesome designs across many different seasons. For me, visual style is one of my favorite things to take note of, so in my first ever ranking video, here are my top 10 best design Common Rider suits of all time. For this ranking, I'm going to be looking at the writer's base suits, meaning I will exclude power-up, super, and final forms. The reason I'm going to look at base suits is because these suits set the foundation for these writers' powers and I think is the most important design for them overall. This list will focus a lot on the visual aesthetic of each suit as a standalone concept, with some story elements influencing my choices, but under the mindset that the visual style is going to be the first barrier of entry to breakthrough until you actually decide to watch the show and appreciate the story. This list is also going to be incredibly biased, and that being said, it only really covers Heisei because Showa era suits, while they are absolutely classic and timeless, just aren't really my flavor. So feel free to agree, disagree, and or share some of your favorites in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. Alright, let's go. Starting our list at number 10 is Kamen Rider Drake from Kamen Rider Kabuto. While I haven't been a huge fan of his music, he's released some tracks across his career that are undeniable bangers. Wait. Oh shit, let me start again. Kamen Rider Drake is the Dragonfly Kamen Rider of the Zect Riders, utilizing his Drake Glip in combination with the Drake Zector to transform into this armored sharpshooter. Side note, the internet says it's called the Drake Glip, but come on, I'm pretty sure it means grip. Kabuto introduced one of the coolest rider mechanics in my opinion, Cast Off. When each rider transforms, they transform into their masked form, which decks them out in massive armor pieces. Only by interacting with their Zectors do they initiate the Cast Off sequence, which propels their armor off at nearby foes and reveals sleeker, more elegant armor. I've always thought this concept was great because it means each rider has at least two forms by default. Kabuto himself is the rider that got me more curious about Kamen Rider overall, but in terms of design, Drake tops it for me. There's just something about the asymmetry of his suit that is so well done, the wing across his chest, one arm having more of an armored sleeve than the other, not to mention his visor. It's just so clean, and I love the imagery of the dragonfly being on his face and making up the mouthpiece as well. Kabuto designs have always been so clean to me, with Drake being a straight up bullseye. Next up at number 9, we have Kamen Rider Zangetsu from Kamen Rider Gaim. Gaim has such a clever concept. I've always really loved Gaim's design philosophy and henshin mechanics. Their lock seeds summon their corresponding fruit, which descend from the sky and position themselves on top of the rider, opening up to materialize the suit and the fruit itself becoming armor. Gaim sees this done with a lot of different lock seeds and fruits and interprets them in some very clever ways. However, the one that has always stuck out to me was Melon Arms, worn by Zangetsu. There's something so chilling about his base suit being in all white, with the green and gold melon accents. The design of his melon helmet is also well done. The visor and crest are so simple yet imposing. And look at that little handle up top. What I think really takes the cake for this design is the melon texture. The green parts of Zangetsu's armor are adorned with a melon-like pattern, but it's not haphazard like on a real melon. It's formulaic and almost looks more like a Japanese textile pattern. This detail does a great job of using the melon aesthetic to showcase Zangetsu's samurai style and design. It's such a great suit. Of all the fruit boys in Gaim, Zangetsu has always been a design I admired. Following Zangetsu at number 8 is Kamen Rider Knight from Kamen Rider Ryuki. It's funny where this is placed on my list because it comes right after a Gaim Rider, whose suits are known to be heavily decked out in armor. The reason I bring this up is because Knight is, of course, a knight, of which you would also expect a heavily decked out suit of armor. But Knight's suit is very similar to the rest of the Ryuki Riders, with the main difference being his chest piece. Knight ends up pulling off the Knight concept without needing to be too busy or complicated. The Knight aspect is consolidated in his chest piece, his color scheme, and his helmet. My god, look at this helmet. Every rider in this show has a grill type visor design to match with the overall knight theme, but Knight's helmet fits so perfectly. 
It honestly kind of feels like they designed him first and were like, wait, he's too cool and we have 12 other riders to make. Let's make the protagonist. Ryuki's suit, I think, is a pretty good main rider suit. It does combine the grill with the typical common rider eyes, which is a bit goofy in my opinion, but it works especially well to visualize Shinji's confusion becoming imbued with his power in the first place. But Knight's visor just screams coolness and blends perfectly with the bat motif of his character. And when he has his sword vent and wing wall cape, my god, this is a beautiful looking suit that effectively streamlines the knight motif in an elegantly edgy way. Next up we have number 7, Kamen Rider Ghost from Kamen Rider Ghost. So I needed to make sure that I included a ghost suit in this list. Ghost was one of those riders whose designs really caught my eye when it debuted. I love the simplicity of it. It is basically a full black armored suit with linear patterns running all throughout as well as a snazzy ass jacket that changes due to the gimmick along with the helmet. The helmet and base colors are really the primary differences between the two main riders, Ghost and Spectre. I was thinking about choosing Dark Ghost for this list because of the black and white color scheme and demonic eyes, but then I realized the ghost suit is actually the perfect version of this. The orange and black color scheme works so well, I thought that the dark ghost color scheme was really cool, but it's kind of typical when you're thinking of a spooky boy. Ghost color scheme approaches this spooky style in Halloween fashion, with the contrast between the two showcasing a balance between the warm orange and the enigmatic black. But what about the helmet? Ghost's face is so simple, but it's so clever. While most of his face is a lit up orange, he has two circles on the side for eyes. This of course falls perfectly with the Kamen Rider style convention of having bug eyes, but they're not embossed into his helmet. The coolest thing about his face is that it's kind of like one of those LED screen masks that changes pictures, and that's how his face represents the different forms. The faces change, and while they are explicit depictions of the form they represent, there is still somehow a face made out of it. It's a really clever design trait. Honestly, Ghost's design is the perfect visualization of spookiness while still adhering to traditional Kamen Rider design conventions. I love it. At number 6, uh, we have Kamen Rider Rixa from Kamen Rider Kiva. Kiva's overall design aesthetic was ambitious because it attempted to unite all the designs under a horror concept. Kiva of course being a vampire, Saga being a UFO, and various other characters having obvious spooktacular vibes. But Ixa stands differently from that. Ixa's theme is that of a holy knight, which does bear some difference from knight's knight aesthetic. I always thought this contrast between Kiva and Ixa was really cool. Sure, Kiva's suit and motif is super stylish, unique, and batty. Honestly, I do really like Kiva and his relationship with Kiva as a henshin mechanic, but Ixa's pure white suit with the blue accent and gold adornments, mm, the juxtaposition of the two was always so great. Aside from his color scheme, something I really liked about Ixa was his visor. In its default state save, his face is a golden cross with a black V-like visor. As I previously mentioned, most common writers have bug eyes, which is a tradition since the very beginning, so the fact that his visor was not bug-eyed was a huge plus to me, and it just looks so cool. Then his burst form comes in and opens up that cross and reveals those deep red eyes, and holy smokes, it looks even better. It sort of reminds me of why I like the Kabuto suits with their cast off effect being similar to this but to a much greater degree. The opening of the visor is done so well and even adds a new regal and holy crown to his helmet. Ixa is one of, if not the, top images for me when I think of a knight in Kamen Rider. In place number 5 we have Kamen Rider Denno from Kamen Rider Denno. Remember how in my other video I talked about how Tokyujiro wouldn't work because trains aren't as big in our culture as they are in Japan? That's precisely why when I heard that Denno was about trains, I was like, what? This is what I mean when I say Tokyujiro won't reach us, it literally didn't reach me. But I will say that the train aspect adds so much depth and complexity to Denno's concept. In his platform, which is a genius name for this concept, he's a pretty blank canvas with train tracks across his body and on his face. It's when he transforms so the trains come into play. For whichever form Denno chooses to henchin into, the pieces of his armor show up on a rainbow train track and then attach to his body. The beautiful part is when the helmet piece arrives, it rides the train tracks on his face and then transforms into the eye pieces. For sword form, it's a peach that opens up which is a direct reference to Momotaro. For rod form, it's a turtle that breaks apart and the eye pieces are the shell. For axe form, 
Uh, this one isn't as creative, but for gun form, it's literally a dragon that creates an even cooler dragon face. It's hard to comment on Denno without talking about all his forms, and that's because these four forms don't really feel like power-ups, they're already default alternatives on the Denno belt. Not only that, but I love that for each form, he's utilizing the same armor, it just gets rearranged and retooled into the new form. It's such a clever design that aptly uses the train transfer feature to reshape Denno into forms that just scream personality. Almost winning a medal in 4th place is Kamen Rider Evil from Kamen Rider Revice. So I actually recently started watching Revice, video on that incoming, but I've already mentioned how Revice's suit is just so... gaudy? Is that the right word? It's busy, it's bubblegummy, and I'm just not too fond of it. Kamen Rider Evil, on the other hand, holy moly, this suit is amazing! The black, green, and gray color scheme works so well together, especially because the two-side driver itself is green. You see splattered all over his edgy armor's ink, kind of Splatoon style, but it's very much in line with the whole stamp concept of the show. Where Evil's design really shines is his eyes. Man, that's such a smart concept. Kamen Rider helmets, of course, are usually much more intricate than Sentai and Rangers. While Sentai and Rangers often have a typical black visor, riders will have these elaborate eyes and I'm always curious to see how they make work practically. Evil's eyes in this case are ink blots, and as haphazard as they seem, they work so well. They're so perfectly shaped to embody just pure ruthless evil. The one thing I will say is that I don't really get bat from this suit, I get it more so from Live, but honestly I thought that Live was such a downgrade from Evil. For Live, I think the white doesn't work as well and the lower body cloth pieces are a bit much, he ends up looking like more of a priest at this point. Evil's design is so simple, so edgy, and so smart, it's my favorite base suit in this series so far. Alright, we're moving towards the end of the list with place number 3 going to Kamen Rider Geats from Kamen Rider Geats. Yeah, you knew this was coming. It may be in small part due to recency, but Geats has got to be one of my top favorite Rider designs. What can I say about the suit that I already haven't said? The white base with red accent makes this suit pop so much. It's very appropriate due to his Kitsune theme, which I honestly thought was such a smart motif. It's funny because in Geats, we see how well they smoothly integrate animals into the helmets, and then there's these. Geats' helmet doesn't have explicitly facial features, its design just screams wiliness and trickery. It's so smartly done in that it's not so obviously a fox face, it's a fox shape that still looks like it's a piece of tactical armor and not a fursuit. Even as an entry form, Geats' helmet is great, but when you equip him with his magnum raised buckle, my god does this compliment him so well. It's also kind of silly because I boast about how much I love the suit, and I literally just realized that his chest piece is the magnum barrel. The ghostly Kitsune design of Geats is in the top tier, and is one that reawakened my love for Ryder. Almost at the finish line at number 2, we have Kamen Rider Cross from Kamen Rider Build. Okay, there are a couple things about this design that make me really like it. For one, it's got flames on it, and it's not sloppily done either. The flames effectively adorn his armor to really showcase Banjo Ryuga's explosive passion through a sleek and contained style. The second is his chess piece. You know in Full Metal Alchemist how the character Alphonse's armor has a sort of raised area around his neck? God, I love seeing that in designs. I guess it's kind of like a collar, and I've always felt that a collared armor piece adds a bit of regality to a design. My favorite part about Cross's design, though, is his helmet. My god, look at that face. Not only do you have the dragon symbol placed front and center like a beautiful helmet crest, but you have these jagged and edgy eyepieces that literally jut out of his face and even look like dragon faces themselves. It's those eye designs that stray from that classic design convention that really showcase thinking outside the box. Or face. Of the build suits, Cross was an instant favorite for me. It's got such a powerful image while still looking very sleek and streamlined, and aptly embodies the fiery and fantastical powers of a dragon. Alright, before I get to my first place suit, let me rattle off some honorable mentions. These suits are suits that I like, but just unfortunately didn't make the cut for top 10. Kabuto, I was so close to putting him on the list instead of Drake. Kabuto's design is a classic staple Zect Rider, and I've always loved his bright blue eyes in contrast to that deep red. New Denno. I was also so close to putting him on the list instead of regular Denno, just because he is an edgier version of Denno and he looks so cool. Kabuki. I really like the Oni Riders of Hibiki, but Kabuki's asymmetrical design just really hits it for me. Mars. I mean, look at it. Look at the rabbit apples. It's so well done. Decade. This barcode boy is just so silly to look at. It's honestly such a smart design, being based on the barcode, but also the minstrel bug. Buffa. This dude is terrifying. Buffa's design is great. That zombie buckle makes him so jagged and edgy and is the personification of fear-inducing rage. 
John. You know, at first, I didn't think this suit was gonna work, but hell, it does. The color scheme is great. It does a great job of combining a fighter's aesthetic with an effeminate flair. I also love her visor. The cobra as her face is genius. And now, ladies and gentlemen, coming in first place is... Kamen Rider Double from Kamen Rider Double. Double is a series that I've long cherished. It was one of the first ones I deeply got into, and it was the reason that I went to school wearing a fedora for some time. Prior to this though, I was doing a lot of research into what Kamen Rider was, and I was beginning to learn some of the differentiating factors that separate the Showa from the Heisei, and how writers differentiate themselves in general. After Decade concluded its run and we came to the second half of the Heisei era, on and off referred to as Neo Heisei by some, Double was our first look at this new generation of writers. It's funny because even to this day, I kind of blend Double's association association with the first era and the second era of Heisei. I of course associate him with the second era because that's where he belongs, and that's where writer gimmicks really started to gain traction. His concept was the half and half writer, consisting of two sides determined by the Gaia memories inserted. He interchanged these memories to accommodate the needed style of combat, and it was really cool to see a writer introduce so many form changes like this. But what makes me associate Double with the first Heisei era is really its simplicity. You have a great base writer form that is capable of inducing different form changes with its gimmick, but the possibilities in execution are limited and restrained. To start off, there are only 6 guy memories at first, and when the forms change, it's their colors that change, and that side also receives whatever complementary power or weapon that's associated with it. It's not something that completely changes his form like the preceding series O's and most other series after would do. It feels like Double was really a baby step in transitioning from the more simple designs and eventually breaking into ambitious complexity without being overwhelming. There's a great level of innovation in its design, not to mention the W crest is genius. Double's design is new and classic at the same time, and it served as a great beginning usher into the second half of Heisei. So that's my list of top 10 rider suits. Did any of your favorites make the list? Or is there one that you love that you didn't see make it on here? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching the first of hopefully many more ranking videos to come. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me rank. I'll be back with more talks, analysis, and reviews of this wild world of tokusatsu. See you next time.